Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today we kick off Acolyte Season. Um, as it's being clumsily called at the moment, there is Acolyte that never goes out. I've, I've managed to cram another British classic in here. We'll discuss it when we get onto it. But um, this is the preview for the season. The season hasn't started yet, if you're listening in the archive and things. But um, let's just get the guests on and we'll talk more about that. Hopefully, uh, two regulars will be with us through the whole run. But uh, from that geek pod, Catherine Neen. Hello, Catherine. Hello. Yes. Uh, very excited. Acolyte, acolyte, acolyte. I've got to practice saying that word. Acolyte, acolyte, acolyte. Just try to imagine right? trying to think of a crazy, you know, pun that has acolyte in it. It's it's a lot harder than it thinks <laughs> it is. And uh, from just Schillen, the man who wouldn't even put his face in front of a microphone 12 months ago, now he's got his own podcast. How the tables have turned. Andy Bell, how's it going, my friend? Good morning. Good evening, friends. Um, hello. It's great to see you both. It's been so long. It really has been so long. So, uh, yeah, glad to see you again and uh, looking forward to the journey. What a journey it will be. Um, yeah, so we're basically we're going to preview the Acolyte. Uh, it comes out tomorrow. So in about, no, not tomorrow, next week. Sorry. Keep people keep. I'm not. I'm not the first person who's thought that it's coming out no. tomorrow, mm. and I think that's because it's sort of everywhere at the moment, which is a good thing if it's front of front of mind. Uh, we do know some people, some friends who have actually seen the first few episodes already, whether that's through Lucasfilm's Graces. I think it's all through Disney or Lucasfilm's Graces. Nothing in my inbox. I don't know about you guys. Nothing. No last last minute. No, I was. No um, love. I was uh, I was checking the Discord and uh, and and uh, an X last night, and I was thinking, uh, just I was amazed at how many folks in the UK actually got to the premiere last night. Um, so yeah, I've clearly done something wrong. Um, but um, <laughs> you're but, on the Disney um, blacklist. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm on the blacklist already. We've only just started the podcast, and we're already we're already on the uh, uh, the, no on the naughty zone. step. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, you know, it, it looks like an awful lot of folk went last night, and um, they've been really gracious. Actually, they haven't given, I haven't found any spoilers yet or any um, anything that could be considered a leak, and they've all been very gracious and um, and just said they had a really really good time, and it looks like uh, it's going to be a lot a lot of fun, which is which is great to hear. What about you, Catherine? No, no last minute uh, Disney sliding into the DMs. Unfortunately, no. I mean. Come on, they know I'm a big fan of Star Wars show starting with a letter A, so um, they should be sending me something. But um, no, nothing. I, and I haven't heard of any big premiere happening here in Australia either. So. No, no, we usually know a few people who know a few people and it doesn't sound like anything. You feel like if they were going to spruik it, they probably would have done it by now. Mm. Th- although I saw a Disney... The Australian New Zealand Disney Plus Instagram put a like a promo up, which was, I think was the first thing they put up in ages as well. So the wheels are turning. You never know. The, the, we, we might get a last second thing. We've been to a few Disney events in Melbourne. They're quite good, um, usually through people we know rather than being you know, on Disney's list. <laughs> I don't think we're on the Disney list. I think it's more people we know who have helped, who've uh, sort of shot us, some, shot us a hand out, but we'll take it either way. So I couldn't work out yesterday, uh, and I was I we worked this out in real time uh, when um, when Sean and I were recording yesterday, and it was um, I couldn't work out why it was such a big deal in the UK, and it wasn't until last night when I actually did some research, ironically during the podcast, not prior to the podcast, which is what I should be doing. Um, I didn't realise how much of it has actually been filmed over here again. Um, I had no idea. I really uh-huh. didn't have any idea. But they've done a lot. They've done a lot of filming in Berkshire in particular, but they've also taken in place like Merthyr Tydfil, which you'll know has been over in over in Wales and um, a few other places scattered across the UK, which is um, which was surprising for me. But also it's quite good because it means that when you guys are next over, we've got more and more places to go and visit. Um, But, yeah, I think that might be the reason why they made such a big deal out of um, of the UK premiere. last night. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I didn't know that, too. Actually, I didn't even really. It feels like it feels like it filmed ages ago <laughs> like yeah. years ago i don't yeah, think it ever yeah, got yeah. officially i mean it, it never obviously it never got officially delayed or it never had this was the, the only release date it ever had 
but it, I feel like it's been, I'm sure if we went back into the podcast archives, we're probably talking about this show coming out for the last 18 months or something, really. When did we see yeah. the trailers? We saw trailers at Celebration London. Yes. That was the first one, wasn't it? So that was a year ago. Yeah. Okay. Celebration. Yeah. So it's just a year and nearly two months ago now. Whew. Memories. All the memories came up for uh, Celebration Anaheim as well, Catherine, yeah. if you saw those. The, from, yeah. That's two years ago now. Yeah, two years ago, um, you know, Facebook tells me I was in Batu. Um, and, yeah, two years ago we entered the cinematic universe of um, of Axel... Of the Ajax citizen <laughs> and still saw Ajax just, citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah, he put a little thing up today. I found a nice photo of him then the morning after with his little stickers and things. He was very, as he would be, very proud as punch to, to um, be able to... Because well, I think the whole thing was that he, he knew that he was on it, but he didn't actually know if he was actually going to turn up or not. So to be, have a little walk on yeah. is a very cool thing, something we can all sort of dream to. But yeah, wow, two years ago of um, from Anaheim and um, obviously two years from the famous... Hayden Christensen incident at Disneyland as well <laughs> that Matt isn't here to defend himself with. So <laughs> we don't need to go into that as usual. But um, yeah, so all reports, people seem to be loving this. I mean, can you can you take them seriously, Catherine? Is it just a bunch of shills or can we take these people seriously that it actually seems like it's pretty good? Um, I, I think uh, I haven't really... I've sort of scanned, like I'm not reading things, if that makes sense. Like even tweets, I'm not kind of reading. I'm just kind of scanning. Glazing the eyes over just in case, yep. Yeah, like they're going, oh, yeah, it's it's good. Um, Or or they really enjoyed it. And it's all from people I know and, yep, who I think would be saying, yes, it's, it's great. They're not chills. They would speak their mind um but i think it looks really good the showrunners really interesting has made some great stuff Mm. Uh, it's a really interesting part of the timeline that we don't know anything about Mm. so yeah i'm excited and a wookie jedi yeah well we'll get to him in a sec so andy you do you when these sort of reactions start trickling through do you do you pour over them or do you kind of like Catherine? you're just like i'm just going to kind of breeze over a little bit i just want to hear good or bad or i don't even want to know that i just i'm so close well i think i've spent the last 12 months really curating my my social media quite well i mean a i'm not particularly prolific on social media anyway so i i miss most things so I'm blissfully, blissfully <laughs> ignorant in many, in many, many cases. But also those people that I, I tend to only uh, look at um, the stuff from people that I know uh, and that yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually friends with. And in most cases, you know, that they, they seem to be decent folk and they, they just don't want to, they don't want to ruin anything anyway. Uh, I also have the added advantage in that I've got no idea what's happening. I've got no idea at all. And I made it very, very clear to to most folk is that unlike. Um, other shows that I may have had some preconceptions or an idea of what um, could be happening that th- that I can speculate. Hmm. Uh, I've I haven't I haven't jumped into the High Republic much to my shame, um, and I am going to at some point have to catch up on that. Hopefully with some help from uh, our buddy Rick, who's a, 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 a um, an expert in that particular area. But um, yeah, no, I've got no idea what I'm going into, and and because of that. I'm actually a little bit more excited than normal. Um, the great unknown, isn't it? It's like it's it's good yeah, to, do you know it's what good I mean? to go in blind. It, it feels it's... like yeah, it it feels like almost like um, I mean, even when we went into um, the sequel series um, or the sequel tri- trilogy, sorry, in 2015, we had kind of a preconception of what was going on because obviously we we knew that the legacy or mm. the, the OT um, team were going to be there. Yep. In, in their latter years, but um, we kind of knew what was kind of expected from we it also, to, a certain, um, to a certain degree. Sorry to interrupt, mate, but the thing is also is that we also, we knew that they were going to be in it, you know, Leia, Han and Chewie and Luke, yeah. you know, to some degree, but we also had an expectation of what we, whether we wanted to or not, what we thought that they would be doing and what we hoped they would be doing. So, you know, I think a lot of the, the grief that, that that trilogy gets is from, you know, a lot of people didn't like that, 
this didn't happen or this didn't happen or this character ended up doing this or this like this there's nothing here this is just like no you you're getting a completely fresh fresh slate you know in season two if it, if it gets to season two it'll be a different kettle of fish because you'll be going oh wow well i hope that the bookie jedi does this i don't know anybody's name or this person does yeah. this or this person does this but at the moment we're going in we're going in cold. It's almost like a completely new IP, apart from that it's Star Wars and it's got Star Wars stuff yeah. in it. Um, so what we're going to do first, before we go any further, and this is tricky. So obviously, how do you do a preview show? You know, when we've done Andor, Catherine, obviously we have all the we had all the history around it. We had all the we know where it's going. We know where it's been. We we know the characters or some of the characters. We can sort of have a gauge of what we think is going to happen. Same with Ahsoka, obviously, because we sort of have all the stuff for that and blah, 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 blah. So we, this is just trickier because of what we've just said. It's We're kind of grasping in the dark a little bit here. Um, so whether we get a full episode or not out. But what we'll do is we'll just talk about the things we know, not talking spoilers. I haven't read any spoilers. I know you guys haven't. I've barely even, I haven't even watching TV spots. I've just kind of gone, no. that's it. So what I'm going to bring up, and you can play along at home, and this is actually... Genius from from Star Wars, I think. The marketing, they've really wrapped the marketing up here. They've put up on their Twitter thing. They've basically just done, this is just basic stuff. It's just a little tweet with sort of, it seems like the five, five main characters. You get a good look at them. You get their name and what they're about. And that's more than I know because I can't name any of these people. And I'm sure by the end of next week, I'll be like, yeah, God damn it. You know, that person in Dara... That's my jam, but right now we don't really know. So I'm just going to bring up the first one here. I know people can't see this at home. Sorry, just, Josh. Yes, sorry, mate. Josh. Before we before we start that, there's there's maybe one thing we do know, which is that, which is when it's set. It's it's set towards the end of the High Republic. Is that right? About a hundred years before the Phantom Menace. I think that's correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, I watched. It's a good start. The first part <laughs> yeah, of um, Alex of Star Wars explains um, what you need to know for going to the acolyte i watched like the first just few minutes and yeah he said set 100 years before the phantom menace thing yeah we already sort of knew that the high republic books are i'd have to bring up the time a timeline again but yeah it's sort of that um 150 to 200 years prior to the phantom menace so they're sort of even you know before this um I haven't dived into phase three of High Republic yet. Phase one right. was great. Um, phase two was set even before that. I and I didn't get into that because of that, you know, going back in time. But I want to get back into this because, yeah, it, there's some stuff with some characters that I want to, I want to read about. <laughs> I want to see. So what, what but, are you saying? Um, so they've. So what I read into that is that they've actually been quite smart and that they've. It is a hundred years before the Phantom Menace, but it's also some time away from where the High Republic books have been set up yes. until now. Yeah, which so it doesn't kind of kind touch of got, either. Yeah, they've got a buffer. Yeah, basically. so yeah. beautiful so we've buffer. Got no, there's no, there's no way that who says Lucas film doesn't have a plan? Them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So there's no accusations well, there. Is... Sorry, go on. Yeah, well, this is the really interesting part about the High Republic, the whole book series. It was called um, Project Luminous, I think, and a whole lot of authors got together and yeah. mapped out a whole lot of stuff. And, you know, each author has gone off and, and written, you know, certain books. You know, some authors have done, you know, YA or the – sort of novel ones and comics and all of that, but it's all being from a one master plan that they all did together. So it's really interesting from that sense that they had a whole big whiteboard of magic um, that they mapped out mm. basically. But, yeah, there is a gap from this High Republic um, books and comics to then uh, Acolyte. Uh, there is a character that is in the High Republic that will appear that we've seen in um, teasers and things for the Acolyte, but that's the only one we've seen. 
Yeah, um, right. And that's the yeah. sort of, you know, the, the Star the wars of, of it. You can, you can drag a few people, you know, a lot of people live a lot longer than some other people and stuff. But, yeah, yeah. look, it's... it's Yeah, and, and look, they are young-ish in the novels anyway. So plus an, a longer lifespan, yeah. Um, that sort of, yeah, works out. But, yeah, it, it's really interesting and it'll be interesting to see uh, the decline of the Jedi from High Republic to Acolyte and then to Phantom Menace. Mm, yeah, it feels like it's, impl- it's it being implied that whatever transpires in this series, whether it's this season or however it longs for, is sort of not the impetus, but it seems to be contributing to the fact that the Jedi sort of set up their own downfall later on or at least start getting the habits or imposing the rules or the things that kind of stops them from being, what you know, a certain way to another way, um, which will be yeah, yeah. super fascinating. Yeah. But again, it's so, mm. you know, what does that mean? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know anything. So I'm going to bring up, so the first character I'm going to bring up here um, is Sol. So he's the first one here. Uh, he's got a nice picture here with a blue lightsaber. Now he is played by Lee Jung Jae who you might know was from Squid Game, if anybody has seen Squid Game. Um, I don't know any of the other stuff that he's been in, and I apologize if I've got somebody's pronunciations wrong and stuff as well. But um, And so the, the blurb on him, effectively, is Master Soul is a wise, highly respected Jedi Master, strong in the ways of the Force, still and stalwart, Sol has a deep sense of compassion and will defend those who cannot defend themselves. He's a powerful warrior with intense emotions that he uses his Jedi training to balance. So that's more than I knew about this guy going in already. Um, so that's interesting. Jedi Master. He's actually in this photo. Um, I can't quite see. I don't know if people, I know this is in the visual medium, but uh, he's wearing gloves. I don't think I've ever seen a Jedi wearing gloves. I wonder if there's his hands. Maybe he's got robot hands. You, cool. you know, you get like the one glove if you lose a hand, kind of thing, as is the way yeah, yeah, in Star yeah. Wars. But doing the double, doing the double, double uh, thing, very cool. Looking good, nice blue lightsaber there. Got a very nice kind of uh, blue swishy effect going on on the uh, the thing there. Does anybody want to do any, any speculating about Master Soul? Any, any? It's a little bit hard to say, isn't it? Really, I feel like it would be pretty pivotal to the story, though. So, did you guys have you guys followed any of the trailers at all? Have you picked up I've seen the first trailer. So it implies that whoever they're looking for has a connection to him. I think that's not a spoiler. Yeah. He's actually implied that it okay. might be his somebody, okay. a former apprentice or at least somebody know he knows. Yeah. So I, I guess he will be one. He may well be the only one, but he will be the one or, or part of a team to investigate the assassinations that are going on yeah so, so we know um, we, we know that basically somebody started hunting down jedi knights which is which just seems yeah. to be not a thing that is done uh, especially from outside of the organization that's sort of the thing that kicks off the kicks off the show um and that's you know that seems to be general knowledge how that plays out we don't know yet um mm-hmm. So let's let's move on. We'll scroll up here. We're just going to work on through. And all, now, I would say, all I would say is that he's a um, he's a great actor. Anyway, he's a great actor. I understand in the background, which I don't think it would be considered a, a spoiler, is he had to really really work on his English um, to do the role. Um, but as an actor, uh, the way he expresses himself, um, certainly from from being uh, really interested in um, Squid Game. Um, Season two coming out in December, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, he's a, he's a, he's a good actor, very very good actor. So and can you imagine having to, to do that, like do just show. learning a second language? You know, you know would you yeah, do it no, if the call came up, it. Catherine? They said, Catherine, you can be in Star Wars, you can be in Andor season two, but your character has to speak German. Oh, you know, <laughs> would you be like, all right, German? Yeah, all right, yeah, I, I, German, I, I, German, I do. Oh, really? Well, we well, had to speak Korean. <laughs> well. I'd give it a bash. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd, I'd definitely work on it. Uh, look, languages, especially like listening and and being able to speak it is not a strong point. But um, no, I definitely would would give it a go. But I think it's it's I'm loving seeing this casting from Disney from well Lucasfilm in going beyond just English as yeah. first language people. I'm yeah. just looking for great actors. Yep. Um, 
and yes he's he's probably needed yes a lot of assistance to learn english or at least on the set you know with with the dialect and and all of that but it's it's worthwhile to get great actors yeah. and just seeing them for actors not well you can't be in this because you have an accent yeah and just and somebody... he's already a very, he's already a very physical actor anyway but also in his expressions yeah. as well he's a very expressive actor as well so you know yep. to your point get the right person for the role let's let's work out the rest later so then we come on to well i would say easily well it depends where you're coming from i suppose but i would say the the biggest name the sort of the person that most people would know if they saw a photo of them on here uh which is indara which is played by carrie ann moss of course from uh bound as it was is she bound maybe i'm wrong <laughs> what else carrie of course she's trinity in the matrix um I mean, she's done lots of other things, as well, of course, but, I mean, that's the iconic role that she's done. And um, we've got a nice picture of her, with a nice green lightsaber, putting the hand up here. And um, I'm just going to read about Indara here. Master Indara is a Jedi Master. So two Jedi Masters already of great physical and mental skill. She is exacting control of her Force abilities, exuding a sense of command and authority with just her presence. Though she does not seek combat, she is skilled enough to engage on her own terms. There you are. So, is it going to be possible to separate Trinity from this character? Are we just going to see Trinity? I know there is a clip where she's doing some moves and is it... You want someone to do that physical stuff so therefore you find someone like Carrie Ann Moss or is it... Are we just going to have to... Be, we're just going to be seeing Trinity doing Star Wars? Look, you, I Catherine. think there is a bit of that because I think even Leslie has Hedlund, the um, showrunner, sort of had that in mind. Basically, she was like, oh, "Can we ha get Trinity with a lightsaber?" Um, and everyone went cool, and no one's really complaining. Like the upside kind of outweighs the downside, her... doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It was a scene with her that was um, released with that re-release of Phantom Menace that I didn't we didn't get to see, um, but you know we see we've seen bits and pieces of that scene and yeah, it just looks cool. Yeah, like yeah, I was she's cool. I was fortunate I was fortunate to see that. So I I I, I saw the um, I saw the uh, uh, the theatre release of um, celebrating the twenty five years with some of our buddies. And um, we got to see the um, the sneak peek afterwards. And um, it, you're right; it, it is cool. It is very cool. I'm not going to give anything away. Um, it's very Trinity. It's very Trinity and very very crouching hider hidden tra crouching tiger hidden dragon, which I think everyone was expecting anyway. And I won't go into any more detail than that. And it is cool. And that for me is, if you like, the um, the 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 entry let the the entry point for an awful lot of folk i hope it's not the totality yep. of the series which i don't think it will be because she's an extremely smart creator um i i, I would i would say that carrie ann moss was the while i love her i love her repertoire i love her work it's the one you know typically star wars doesn't use big names um and if they do use them they use them sparingly does it feel um, a bit like woody harrelson in solo where you kind of just sort of seen woody harrelson space woody yeah 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 um yeah however i do think that um um leslie's a little bit more nuanced in her in her creating mm -hmm. and perhaps will use carrie ann a little bit differently to the way that Ron used um, Woody. Yeah. Um, what, what's funny about Woody is he's always Woody Harrelson. Yeah. But the Woody Harrelson you see in Solo is different from the Woody Harrelson you see in True Detective, which yeah. is different from the Woody Harrelson you see in Hunger Games, and yet all you see is Woody Harrelson. <laughs> it's, it depends on what, what, what hair he, piece he's got on that day. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I just think bit, if you, but... if she, I think, you know, I think Leslie Hedlund was probably writing this character going, what I really need to do is find someone who can be like 
you said Trinity with a lightsaber who has all the attributes. What I need is a carry man Moss. You know, what I need is a carry man Moss type. And probably just went, why don't I just ask carry man Moss yeah, yeah, and just yeah. start there? And then if I can't get that, then I'll work. I'll work myself backwards. But as far as like, I want somebody with a certain look who's a certain age who can do these physical things that not every you know fifty whatever carry man Moss is probably in a mid fifties year old person can do. Um, who has that sort of gravitas to it. So, you know what? Bring it on. I don't care. <laughs> if the show's good, I can look past that I recognize an actor doing Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, no, no, so. I, and I think, and like I said, I think that she will, I think she won't be used as, I think she'll be used um, as an exquisite or a, a, an amplifier to the, for the, um, uh, for, for the way that the series is going to land as opposed to a bit of a blunt object. I think, I think, I think it'll work. It's yeah. the only thing I would say that I was a li- ever so slightly a little bit worried about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then we move it up to, and this is the mystery. We're going to do the mystery here into May. <laughs> so we're seeing a, a masked figure here. Um, just seeing her eyes. She's got a couple of knives handy. M-A-E, May. A mysterious young woman with a tragic past. May gets swept up into a sinister mystery. Mystery one. Sinister mystery one. What's a mystery one? I think Mystery. that's just meant to be a hyphen, like a mm. almost like a comma oh, okay. or a semicolon. Right. Treat it like a semicolon. All right. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Neen. <laughs> Correct the grammar here. Mystery one that puts her in the centre of a conflict in unexpected ways. She is determined to exact vengeance on those who wronged her, and little can stop May on her quest. Now, the obvious thing here is that we're believed to think that she's the the baddie, and she's the one doing the bad stuff. And this is. Um, Amanda Stenberg, I believe. Mm. Yeah. Even though her face is covered, but her face isn't covered in everything. Um, is she? I mean, she's obviously in. If, you know, if you've seen the trailers and things, she's obviously combative, and she's in there. But is she the red herring in this show? Is she the one that they're trying to make you think is the the one kind of doing the damage, and yet she's just a part of a bigger thing, or maybe she ain't so bad after all, or we don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm just guessing here, guys. So are you asking, is she the Phantom Menace? <laughs> well, is she, is she the Phantom Menace? Well, she's more the front and centre. Good night, guys. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> But is she the stooge? Is she the? And is I'm she not the, the dad is, here. Is she the? <laughs> is she the Darth Maul of this? Is she the stooge at the front who's, you know, being used as the tool uh, to a greater end? Uh, I just think in that same, Leslie Headland's such a in smart the same writer; trailer, it's not going to be obvious. Exactly in the same trailer, she protests her innocence so much that it's actually quite believable. I mean, it's extraordinarily good acting, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, which I got from that trailer anyway was oh this is something a little bit different this isn't your this isn't your 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 your, your Saturday morning Star Wars this is something else going on here and she protests her innocence so much that I thought it could be believable um, or maybe she doesn't even know what she's doing I don't know I'm uh, we've mm-hmm. got that we're getting down the the, the road of speculation now but. Um, I think I think there's something in what you're saying there, mate. I really do. There is. It's either I don't know. Uh, um, um, it's either like a misdirect, the scapegoat, the 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 patsy. Mm-hmm. She either doesn't know what she's doing and is somehow possessed, um, or it's something very very different. I mean, I've seen people people spec- speculating the most bizarre. Um, things online to to yep. to kind of explain that, that that statement she makes and i don't i don't don't particularly want to speculate but it does add, it does add a level of intrigue which makes it even more exciting going into this next week uh catherine i i, I when turbo was on last week was sort of i was sort of talking about the show and i and i said i sort of feel like it's it's the it feels like the kind of thing that's not going to reveal itself till we get to the very end that there's going to be a lot of assumptions that either stuff isn't happening or people are doing dumb things or why would they make that decision or why would they say that or this isn't going the wrong way or blah, blah, blah. And it's going to be slowly kind of unraveling and we're not really going to get a lot of answers, solid answers till we get to the end. Do you sort of get that vibe? Which isn't really a Star Wars thing, is it, really? No. I'm trying to think. I mean, Russian Doll is the only thing I can sort of think about. I mean, I've... Because it's you know Leslie Headland, you you kind of 
you get some mysteries solved along the way, mm-hmm. but it's it does get tied up all at the end, or like a or bigger picture at the end sure as well. Of. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think everything will get left hanging till the last episode or so because you know that I don't think don't that forget. fully works. Yeah. Don't forget if we if we didn't have if the films were released in chronological order we wouldn't have known that Palpatine was Sidious until the very very end and so it's only because of the timeline in which case they were produced that we kind of went into the the prequels knowing exactly what was going on and who that shady dude was from um from Naboo but um I still think and this is a this is a person this is no, no spoilers here this is a personal thing and I brought it up brought it up a couple of times now is that Star Wars like does like to hide things in plain sight it didn't work for the prequels because I said as I said you know we got the OT first mm. but this um, is clear but, runway but is, so you can actually there is it, exactly. nothing to inform your decision one way or the other exactly so so the the, the, the notion that 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 potentially that that we if there is a relationship between between soul and this this person um maybe just maybe the issues or to your point earlier on the, the start of the downfall of the jedi is from within yeah maybe the the phantom menace is within <laughs> the jedi order itself Paul's coming from inside and the house the the, yeah. the 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 threat that we may well see either in this season or the next season or whenever may well be somebody that's hiding in plain sight all along that we least suspect yeah. is actually is yeah. actually um, pulling the strings. Yeah, the a, larger a baddie. threat. A baddie. Yeah. yeah, the larger threat. Whereas, in, and in some ways, um, you know, from my patchy knowledge of you know, the High Republic books, there's been the big threat of the Nile, Mm. but a lot of the Jedi have focused on a certain member and has missed the larger um, conspiracy going on or the larger danger that's going on. They're pretty good at Um, doing it, aren't they, really? (laughs) Yeah. They're not really big picture thinkers. (laughs) All hubris. Yeah, they think that they know all everything. Yeah. so now we roll up to the aforementioned uh, Wookiee Jedi. Awesome. He's got a lovely top knot. Kalnaka? 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 I guess like Chewbacca with a K. Kalnaka, which is portrayed yeah. by good old Eunice, who is also obviously Chewy. But uh, he gets to sort of, you know, walk his own path here, be his own man. He's, he doesn't have to sort of be, be a legacy. Uh, carry a legacy this he can kind of play it how he wants to play it and it just says a wookie jedi master so another jedi master three jedi masters kalnaka has sequestered himself in the tangled jungles of kofar he is a loner who lives a solitary life so that's interesting i didn't know any of that so he's basically rolling solo jedi rolling solo um so i'll be curious to see how he kind of gets dragged into the whole thing really Love a good Wookiee. Tell me something. Tell me something, Catherine. I've, I've been thinking, and this is, I hope it's not a spoiler, but in the the way that they've described this guy, plus Indara, plus Soul, suggests that they they almost they're almost like I wouldn't say regional governors, but you have these Jedi that are scattered across the universe as opposed to being in one temple. They're kind of they're kind of like local rangers. Do you know what I mean? Like local sheriffs. That that is that a thing in the High Republic? In in the High Republic, um, yeah, it wasn't as centralized on Coruscant. There were Jedi temples all over the the known right. galaxy, um, which had masses and padawans all together. I mean, they would go to Coruscant occasionally, but it wasn't as centralized on Coruscant as what we see in the prequels. Right. And so I think, you know, that, you know, going from all around the galaxy to being very centralised is actually part of the Jedi downfall. But, um, yeah, they would travel around or 
be in different places all the time. Um, and, and what was it? I can't remember the name of it now. I want to say Lighthouse Beacon, but that is wrong. Um, that they built oh, is it Starlight Beacon? during the first phase. Starlight Beacon, that's it. Thank you. Um, that's meant to be like an outreach almost that can move around the galaxy with Jedi in it. Um, but, yeah, because of this conflict with the Nile, things become, I think, slowly get you know, linked in more with the Republic. So the Jedi and the Republic don't necessarily go hand in hand initially. And then over the course of this conflict with the Nile, because it is so galaxy-wide, because they threaten all the hyperspace lanes, uh, they, the Republic and um, Jedi do have to team up. Now, I'm spewing what little High Republic knowledge I have, but I don't think you'll need to really know that for the Aculi. No, I'm just I think interested. it's interesting just, to know. Yeah, no, it's yeah. interesting just because the they, like you said, they're just, yeah, yeah, they're kind of rolling solo. Mm. But that's something that we have that I don't think anybody's touched on and I haven't seen anything and I haven't been searching it out, but the Republic, what's the Republic doing? It, do they even get a yeah. mention in this? Are they completely separate? Do, they, do we start seeing them encroaching on the Jedi going, hey, you guys are... Can't keep your house in order. We might have to come in uh, and um, and help you out with some stuff. So that would be quite yeah. fascinating, actually. You know, who's the chancellor at the well, moment? What's going on? Are they are they still in the little potty things? What's, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting is that we've seen a couple of little bits from Coruscant during the trailers, and I've seen some side by side stills of you know the Jedi Temple from. Um, Acolyte and from Phantom Menace and to see how much Coruscant builds up like how many more levels get added to it because in um, Acolyte the Jedi Temple is you know head and shoulders higher Mm -hmm. than a lot of other things but the rest of Coruscant sort of levels up and builds up Um, that'd be annoying wouldn't it you think you've got like the penthouse suite and then they just build another level on top of your house all of a sudden (laughs) Basically, <laughs> you said some Basically, nice views. Um, yeah, and during it's interesting you br- will bring up hermits and things that during the High Republic books they ha- have the idea that you don't have to be that traditional Jedi Master and you don't have to take that path. There are other paths for Jedi to take, and there is that flexibility there not the dogma that um we we learn during um the phantom menace that or during um the the prequel era that you think sort of kept anakin within the box that he was sort of fighting against and even um ahsoka was sort of fighting against in some ways so it was interesting that that. yet yeah. I love that. I love that because in and I don't want to use the a dirty word, but in legends they they all, they often talked about um, um, Jedi that specialize in healing and go off to be healers. You know, for example, yeah. with um, um, Barris and uh, uh, being a healer on Med Star One, they talk about um, others being really really adept at growing things. So they get into agriculture and things like that. I love I love that making the the Jedi a lot more a accessible, but be a lot more broad. Um, you don't have to their, just be a cop. Philosophy, not not yeah, exactly. Not not just a, not just about a person with a laser sword. I, I I love that, and so I you've convinced me to start reading again. So thank you. <laughs> um, so I've only got I've only got six days. But, <laughs> you uh, you get cracking. You got you got a bit to catch up on. <laughs> There are, now, there's only one more character thing left. Now, there are other characters in this. We might see if we can touch on it. I might just bring the, the casting up and see if I can put a face to the name and things, but we'll see how we go. But the last one here is Jekai Lon, who is portrayed by uh, Daphne Keen. Not Ka- Daphne Neen. Almost. Yeah. Almost. But Daphne Keen, who, of course, was X-23 in Logan and... I always remember was from his Dark Materials as well. Was um, mm. uh, I've got no name now. Was um, uh, oh the main yeah, kid. it was um, 
What was it? Not Elsa. Not Isa. I, um... Um, <sighs> show I stopped watching could be... Lyra. It was mean animals. Lyra. Yeah, not great Elsa. if you don't want to if you, uh, see some bad things happen to CG animals. But she's obviously excellent. Um Excellent actor. And her character, if you want to read about Jekai Lon, is a skilled and studious Padawan learner. So we've got a, finally got a Padawan in here. Jekai Lon shows great promise in her path to becoming a Jedi Knight. The Padawan apprentice to Master Soul is young, but she projects calm and conducts herself with maturity. So she's the current Padawan to Jedi Soul. So maybe after the last one, jump ship or whatever happened to her, this is the new one who's in her place. Um... I'm not sure what species she is. Does anybody? I guess you haven't got the photo in front of you, but she's got some sort of very cool little horns going on and uh, and some makeup and stuff. Nice, cool green lightsaber. She's not, she's not one of the species that was added in the special edition of... Um, no. One of the dancers? No, I was thinking about the... Yeah, one of the dancers for Jedi Rocks. I think I saw something like that on... Twitter, someone was comparing them. But yeah, I, I that's where my holes are. I couldn't tell you the um species. Speaking, name. speaking of Jedi Rocks, I uh I my my question to the uh to, to the Scruffy's prediction show which they bet out last week, which was lost in the spam folder apparently. Maybe it was too dumb a question and it was just editorial took over, was was asking my prediction was that there would be a musical number. A la a Jedi rocks or something in this series, and I know it doesn't seem like it's the tone, but I feel like it's still going to have to be pretty Star Warsy. It's not just going to be all serious doom and gloom. Someone's no. being killed. I think there'll be lots no. of little Star Warsy flashes and things in it. And I, you know, I think a little, a little musical number wouldn't go astray. From a certain point of view, Andor had a musical number, like the Neomos song yeah, yeah. theme that was throughout. Yeah. In, in different mixes, like it was diegenic as well as um, soundtrack music. Yeah, they normally have a little way. bit of something. Solo did. Put it this well. way: had they had they read your question out anyway, you wouldn't have got any of the abuse that I certainly got. On <laughs> you did five questions, so <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. I was like, I'll do yeah. one. I'll get in. I'll get out. I'll just, you know, I'll. I'll... Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, it was I thought I thought on yeah. the cutting room Whatever. floor. <laughs> it's yeah. cruel cruel boys um so yeah that's the that so quite interesting so a padawan learner um she's got the braid going she's uh looking pretty cool i have heard i have seen feedback on people who've seen it who a lot of people vibed with this character I, there was no spoilers but she seemed to have made an impression on people who had seen the first few episodes as well which is quite cool well, in that in that shot, she looks fierce, right? I mean, she yeah. looks really, really fierce, which is fantastic. Um, and um, she's obviously yeah, someone who can piece. act with a bit of intensity as well, if you've seen Logan and, and, and his dark materials yeah. as well. She's a very good actor. So I think the acting is not going to be a um, is not going to be a problem in this show. I think it's... Uh, which is not what you can always say about Star Wars. But uh, so... I'm just sort of looking at the cast list here. I'm just trying. I mean, obviously, I can see Manny Jacinto here, who people recognise from The Good Place, who was sort of the lovable idiot in The Good Place, and he does turn up in the in the trailers as well. And he he seems to be sort of bad mouthing the Jedi Order a little bit. So I don't know whether he's what his deal is, but um, he's in there. And there's also Rebecca Henderson who plays Vanessa Rowe which I believe is the, the High Republic character who's sort of carried over from the book. She's the, the bald lady with the green skin um, that when the, she got brought out at um, Celebration, I think it might have been the High Republic panel that I saw, people lost their minds that she was carrying over. So she's obviously a beloved High Republic character. Yes, with a very cool like say. Oh, is she the whip lady? Um, yep, yep. Uh, so Sorry, which one's a bit this? of controversy. Which one is this? This is Van, um, Vanessa, Vanessa, Vanessa Rowe. Rowe. She's the the Jedi oh, yeah. with the green skin and the bald head. So she and might she's have. She's the one that came from the books, right? Yeah. In okay. um, Phase One, she's just become a Jedi Knight, even though she's like sixteen. She proved herself worthy. Um, Apple polisher. Her lightsaber is not just a lightsaber. She hits a setting, and it's also a whip. Cool. That is cool. So um, uh, she was, her debut was in um, not 
the YA, but like the sort of middle, I think the middle school reader ones, which are, are quite good to read. Um, she had been a Padawan of a fairly major character in like the adult novels. Um, but yeah, she's like a teenaged uh, Jedi Knight. Cool. And she's still kicking by the time we get to the High Republic yep. as well. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and then there's all the speculation. I love the light. So, the sorry to interrupt. Go, mate. Josh, I love the I love the light whip stuff again. Back in That's Legends, cool. I don't know if you don't know if you guys remember Lady Vader or um, was it Lumia? Lumia from the original Marvel comics that was the the new Dark Lord that came out um, that came out. Uh, in the years after Return of the Jedi, this new threat, this new dark lady, um, which they coined Lady Vader. Um, and it transpires. I mean, it's a cracking piece of, of comic book history in my mind, in my shallow mind, because they went, um, because they do the origins. Um, they did the origins of Lady Vader or Lumia um, before the appearance of Lumia. And you don't put the two together at all lumia was a friend of luke's was a good friend of luke's between the time of empire strikes back and return of the jedi um and he without giving too much away he kills her by accident and um he's absolutely <laughs> he back it. over it's, in the driveway or something like <laughs> it, 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 it destroys him destroys him because he was he had dare i say a, a almost romantic um, relationship with her anyway as it transpires she was a bad and all she was a, she was she was a wrong and all along um and it transpires years and years later lady vader comes out and she's got this amazing light whip that absolutely batters him <laughs> absolutely <laughs> batters him to the point where he has to develop his own um short short lightsaber you know how the samurai use two different oh yeah yeah like a little knifey one braids and then they have the little knifey one he develops his own little knifey saber so that he can bite he can fight this uh this light whip sorry that's a long way of that's a long way around of saying <laughs> i'm way up for light whips i'm really Pump for the light whip yeah yeah i'm, yeah, I'm yeah, excited absolutely. and if you're gonna poo poo something like come on guys seriously i'm not gonna bother getting into all of that nonsense so yeah possible and then we don't. I don't have a photo. We don't know anything about. Obviously, in the trailer, there is a bad-looking entity. I won't say dude or dudette. We don't know in a mask and a very cool looking, like a looking like a killer whale or something with the teeth around the thing, yeah. or like an orca or something. A very cool design. Um, again, we don't know who it is under there. Is it a misdirect? Is it someone bad? Is it? Are they going to last? You know, one episode and get turned into a puff of smoke like the one in Ahsoka? We don't know yet, but. Uh, you know, expect expect the uh, Black Series figure to come out soon. They'll just, you know, someone will get the little paint on a black thing and put it out, which is very cool. And then, um, obviously, somebody like Yoda is around at this time. So, will we see Yoda? And will it be Puppet Yoda or will it be Computer Yoda? It's interesting because in the High Republic books... He gets mentioned. He's made some appearances in comics, it's like little. He's in the Young Jedi Adventures, thinking, which is set in the High Republic. Yeah, as well. Yeah, which is the, the, most um, of the High Republic stuff I've seen because my daughter watches it. <laughs> and the, I think, in the younger like graphic um, stuff as well. I think he he's made appearances <laughs> there, but it's been more. Um, mentions of um, like I'm not going to say none but more mentions of rather than appearances by yep. Yoda so it'd be interesting to see you know what they do because obviously yes he's there he's a member of the council Yaddle is a member of the council they go that far back um, do they it's a, well, it's a long time to have the same job isn't it really at the very least, they'd be Jedi Masters, yep. because yeah, he's a Jedi Master at that, that time. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I like you know. I'm always up for Yoda. The more Yoda, the better, I suppose. But at the same time, I kind of go like, oh, this thing has a chance to really be its own thing. Do we want to lean on something exactly. like Yoda? Exactly. Yeah. 
exactly and and um i'm exactly with you uh 100 with you there josh um they don't need him um but i do understand if they have to squeeze him in and use him again if it's done right you know if it's done tactically in the in in, in the right places um having him as a kind of you know breaking the fourth wall wink to the to the fans out there hey do you remember this guy i think would be a little bit too much cheese for for my liking but bearing in mind he is an exalted by the time we see him in the prequels he is an exalted grandmaster um it probably makes sense if indeed there is a conglomeration or a meeting of 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 jedis together or jedi sorry together um it would probably make sense that he's part of that but again used you know if he's just sort of chipping in and then someone else is running with it like if he's just kind of like yeah. check it out yeah. I've gotten really nothing to add yet he's not the one that they're looking to for solutions I don't want him to be the one to solve anything yeah. it would really just be well we acknowledge he's there even if he's just sort of like if they're doing a council scene and people talking and he's just one of ten and he doesn't even say anything or he's just there in the background like I'd yeah, actually yeah, be yeah. quite fine with yeah, that yeah. like oh well there he is yeah. but he's he doesn't have the floor he doesn't run the he doesn't necessarily running the floor at the moment yeah. so I, I, yeah. I, I agree and I think that this I think that this I think this show has the opportunity to 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 make it about other people's stories, which everyone's craving for. You know, something new, something exciting, and you know we don't have to revisit old ground where where we don't need it. Certainly not for the sake of fan service. Um, I, I'm totally with you. Yeah, and I think that's really. I mean, obviously you touched on Yaddle as well, which I guess potentially could be there, and we don't really know if there are the Jedi that, that go that far back that we've seen before. I'd have to talk to somebody like King Tom who would have the knowledge of how old people are and all that kind of stuff and like whether they would turn up or what they're up to. But I think, like you said, sort of touched on before, Catherine, if, there's, if they're not quite as centralised as they end up being, it might just be that they're literally, the story isn't all in one place where they all are at the same time, so it doesn't really matter. You don't have to touch on it. Um, mm. I, I don't think anybody else goes that far back. I mean, do we talk about the Sith? Will we, is this is this even a Sith story? Is is it just a dark side story? Is is it the Sith in the background? It feels like it's hinting towards that. I mean, it's definitely a dark side story, but there is a difference between just being with the dark side and want to break some windows, you know, kick some heads, as opposed to being a, a complete bored in Sith person. A Sith person. <laughs> what do you reckon? Do you think that is that sort of the, the overarching thing here? Um, I think there's a chance, like it's a good chance of having not just dark side users, but Sith. Um, you know, obviously the Jedi could think, oh, they're just dark, or oh, they're dark side users, or oh, they're misguided. Troublemakers. But troublemakers and miss the fact that they are Sith. Mm. Um, because, of course, you know, old mate, you know, said, oh, they haven't been Sith for a, a thousand years. Um, but, you know, that's just from a certain point of view. Um, you, they just might not know. Well, they haven't believed anyone previously. Like, they didn't really believe Qui-Gon either. And you, so it's very possible they've been <laughs> encountered things and they've just brushed it off because, again, hubris. Um, again, yeah. it, it did seems... We ever, did we ever... Sorry, sorry to interrupt again. Did we ever find out? I know it was in Legends again, but not. I don't think we ever it ever got confirmed in canon. Was Plagueis Sidious's master? Did we ever in canon? That? You mean? I know we. I know we know it in 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 Legends from um from the novel Plagueis. Um, I don't think so. In, no. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you do I they wondered, go down? I that... just wondered if. The, yeah. I just wondered if this was going to be kind of not maybe not the conclusion of this season, but future seasons. Whether the conclusion is that it was Agatha all along. Sorry, it was Plagueis all along. You know, it was it was kind <laughs> I, of. I'd like he, to he's, sort he's, of he's, um, he's put in the screens. I'd like to know, like, why are they taking so long? What exactly are they waiting for? Was it just that Palpatine was more ambitious and because he was a white guy, he could actually get himself elected and that was his way in? Like, what, what was the deal? Like, what, What's motivating them to just do two and that like that's enough? Are they actually actively... Are they actively always trying to dismantle the Jedi and they're working towards something? Or 
if you're gonna like uh, that's the kind of stuff that I'd like to know. Like if you're gonna touch on the Sith on this, and we're actually if we are leading towards the downfall of the Jedi, is this a thousand year old plan? And th- you're at we're at year nine hundred and ninety five nine nine hundred of a thousand year plan and everything's going according to plan or is it literally just like these people can't get out of their own ways and they just infight and they basically just the next one thinks they're taking over and they and it just like they just limp on basically because the next one's more ambitious than the next and nothing ever gets done until palpatine right. manages to come up with a plan or is there more to it like i'd actually like to know that stuff and get some answers on that part of my understanding of the rule of two Again, I'm not 100% sure how much is canon, how much is legend, is that they came up with the rule of two because there was so much fighting between yep. Sith trying to take things over. So, you know, not having big Sith empires and, and whatever sort of narrowed it down, whatever. But, um, but I think with things so decentralised, prior to uh, so like prequel era sis couldn't take over and you're probably right that um palpatine saw opportunity to take over because of again the hubris of the yeah. jedi and the corruption within the system um so he was able to exploit all of those things that were already pre-existing that maybe yeah previous sith they weren't part of the system they lived on the fringe what's what i mean like are they just happy to exist to and things. then just get the next one to go well at least there's two of us and we just keep this thing going as opposed to my like- ambition is to run a take over and, and kill everybody <laughs> yeah but it, but it's also like any other predator um you always go for the weakest target and so by definition a couple of hundred years before the phantom menace there was the high republic they're powerful Mm. they're solid you know they're together they've got their they've got their they are a unit they are i'm guessing um uh the the best that the jedi could be at that moment in time and and pretty formidable i'd I'd assume for any for any wrongdoer to try and take them on and so you spend the years trying to weaken that that body um and i guess when it comes to the phantom menace they're, they're so weak it's a little bit like um hyenas or you know or, or or any other predator that that literally goes for the wounded am- animal mm. because they're an easier target and that's that's in, in, in certainly in my head canon that's always been the case when it came down to you know why why sidious and why then it, yeah. because it was pretty weak and the whole system was broken let's face it he got the entire galaxy fighting amongst it amongst themselves um and um yeah that's kind of always in my head kind of as to why 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 like i said why sidious and why when yeah why then and sorry. is it is it about the is it really about the the organization or is it about the person you know like it feels like it became more just about palpatine more about himself although then by the time you get to rise of skywalker he does have all the sith acolytes and it feels like he sort of he has the sith army so maybe he is making his move he's like well we're disbanding the empire that's just a vehicle to get and now we're actually going to like run thing run things but um and of course by and of course by the time we get to rise of skywalker as well he is all the sith he's got all the sith in him so ultimately yeah. it if you're talking about the organization or the individual, they're one of the same. That's yeah. the way that JJ kind of tried to, they try, he tried yeah. to portray that. <laughs> they tried. <laughs> they tried. The, the implication within the High Republic novels to the time of the prequels is that there were a lot more Jedi. Like that was the time mm. of the 10,000 Jedi's type of thing. But by prequels, there were a lot less. So, and centralized so all of that sort of then does make it easier right for, for the picking. a Sith to yeah yeah so and, and 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 still depleting during the clone wars as well don't forget there's the clone wars oh. that kicked off yeah. that 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 essentially eliminated an awful lot of their in particular their high generals which is the reason why youngsters like anakin were perhaps promoted to higher positions like general way before their yeah. time 
I just watched Attack of the Clones well, the over the weekend. Well, the Battle of Geonosis. So, I, the Battle of Geonosis took a lot of um, players off the board and that's yeah. why, yeah, yeah. you know, like Anakin was promoted to knight and, and all of that type of thing. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully we'll have some answers. I don't think we're going to have any answers <laughs> by this time next week. I think we're going to basically be sitting here going, ooh, what's going to happen? Ooh, with, with, uh, the pieces are moving. Ooh, this is intriguing. Ooh, I like this. Like, I, you know, I think... It's going to be very good for feverish cock duty speculating, to quote our friend Hawes Burkhart. But uh, I don't think we're going to get any solid answers for a while, but I think it's going to be damn fun to talk about. So, uh, yeah, back next back next week, guys, hopefully. Hopefully we'll see you. Yep. Um, yep, at that torturous release I time. know. Well, that's, yeah. 11 a.m. It'll be 11 a.m., so it'll be, do you watch it at your lunch break? I don't know how you're going to, Andy, you're going to roll out of bed and watch it first thing yeah or... i'm not watching it one or two in the morning <laughs> no way at all you can need, no need your beauty sleep as we all do um so yeah thank you everybody for for listening and this is the kickoff of this so you know if you're into it share it around uh you know give it a five star review if you've made it this far all that business um andy you want to plug plug the plug the old shillin just shillin it's roaring through the episodes at the moment yeah, if you want to listen to two two guys that have a chat every week about mainly Star Wars, but an awful lot of other things as well, uh, we don't really know what we're doing, but we're just having a bit of a laugh. Uh, you can check us out on justshilling.com. It's a lot of fun. And there you go. Catherine's holding it up, the artwork, right as we speak. Catherine, that geek pod is still dropping still dropping a little bit of fire every now and then. Uh, it's, uh... Look, it's every now and again. It's intermission, you know, depending on outside forces um but i will be looking to do something um with regards to furiosa yeah i've got to see it first um i just said oh it's so good sorry under my breath so yes get there yeah oh i want to see it i want to see it because um you know obviously a few years ago covered um all the mad maxes in order on geek pod so you know, want to keep that rolling. Um, yeah, so that should be coming out sometime soon. I just, yeah, have to get my act together. Everybody, it's if so you haven't good. seen it, everybody is listening. For some it's reason, so if, you're, if you're putting it off and you're going, oh, I'll just watch it at home in a few weeks, like go and see it at a cinema. It is, it's what the movies are made for, people. Seriously, you're complaining about things. Like it's just pure, it's pure cinema. So get out there. But um, Josh, I know. I know you want to wrap up, mate, but um, I had a, I had an, a, I was talking to again talking to Sean about it last night, and uh, it's one of those films that I was really really enjoying about four fifths of the way through, and then and then that, that last part of the film, in my head this this switch happened, and it just became the best film I've ever seen. <laughs> it is so so good. It really is so good, and I can't I can't really explain why it was so far into the movie that it, uh, that that my mind shifted. But you, you, I implore everyone to see it. It really is so good. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, we'll be back next week, and we'll we'll roll this on. I, we'll see if we can get Matt Mole on. I'll be curious to see. I'm sure he hates the the title that we're giving this review thing um, as well. He probably wanted to, to stick with something up, but bad luck, you're not here. Um, so thanks everybody. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Josh. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.